Look at that. Ah, oh, so beautiful. The hills. That is amazing. It's just extraordinary. And it's from everywhere. I wrote a novel called You or Someone Like You. It's set in Los Angeles, and the narrator is an English woman, Anne, who married an American movie studio executive. They live high in the Hollywood Hills. Los Angeles is to me what it is to so many others. These strange concrete ribbons of cars, impossibly blue skies, the gold and pink sunlight that turns even the concrete walls into magic. Joan Didion called California the promised land's promised land. Los Angeles is a mix of beauty, artificial and natural. Its possibilities in the blue air. You bring your dreams and you see if this strange place will make them real for you. In the novel, I had Anne say it this way. When I arrived here with Howard, I was struck by the palm trees since where I come from, they are a potent exotic symbol. Of course, this place I live now is more simple than place. Palm trees are not indigenous to LA. They are all imports but then so am I. They stand before our house on Macapa Drive, where our street intersects Mulholland, just the other side from Universal Studios, looking far down on the 101. My perfumer, Caroline Sabas, and I have created our idea of the fragrance Anne would wear. It's not Los Angeles stuffed in a bottle. It's the fragrance of a person who doesn't exist. Anne, as I wrote her, is a very private, practical person. A reader, a gardener. I wrote her a trellis of green clematis for her garden and the wild grasses you see growing through cracks in parking lots everywhere in LA. But neither of those has a scent and the raw materials Caroline used are irrelevant. The scent is the scent. If you need to know what's in it, you is probably not for you. A scent is something that by definition is not native to you. You transplant it to yourself. You put it on your skin and see possibility in the blue air.